a super boy. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright. And you're listening to The Krypton Report. And you're listening to Krypton Report. things kryptonian podcast including superman and supergirl we discuss games movies cartoons tv shows and comics. find us on facebook instagram youtube and twitter and word and friend and supergirl welcome to the krypton report and i guess james we're done with the arrowverse for now like it oh, seems that way um everything shut down Everything shut Sorry, down. Sorry, I'm stuffing my face. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> uh, but yeah, everything shut down. So uh, now we know that there's some stuff filmed. And I saw a report with Nicole, who plays Dreamer, that they were filming the final episode when the shutdown happened. So I heard that on a lot of the shows. So I'm like, okay, so maybe when production does pick back up, we'll be able to, you know, it's not as bad as we thought. Um, And we'll see what happens. You know, if they're that far done, they can maybe just, you know, air what they have. And the second to the last episode just put to be continued. And then the first episode of next season is technically what would have been the cliffhanger for this season or something. You know, so it's it's not a complete loss is what I'm trying to say. There, There is a way to work it um let's see no, i mean unless they just push it into the summer I mean, when they finally do get they push back a week the premiere <clears throat> of star girl that doesn't really make sense but whatever yeah that's all done that, the I, the weird thing weird i mean honestly the thing i feel for say these cw shows is they're filming in like they film in Canada, right? They film they all film in Vancouver. And um the uh other countries are a little a little on a on a little more of a lockdown. Yeah. Besides essential personnel and um are more serious about the things plus most people in, well, a lot of people in other countries, maybe say Canada and stuff like that, everything's a little more balanced. So perhaps some of those people are, you know, some some people have m- uh, more ability to go to the stores, you know, mm-hmm. they didn't uh, or, or have enough to stay locked down. So some of these countries that are on a full lockdown and go for a month or so then it's kind of like they 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 go into a, into a relapse or not a relapse um uh, re- re- i don't want to say recession <laughs> no, no i feel you um but you know they 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 come back from it you know they start having people recovering from it and and the number of cases start to go down so whereas here in the united states people don't want to stay at home so they can stop the spread of this thing and get it under control. Yep. So they may be able to get back to work sooner in Canada than people here. Maybe, you know, but we will see, you know, we, we will see. Um, but until then, we're just going to have to make do with what we have. And I mean, that's, you know, that is what it is. Okay. Like there are bigger, more important things going on than making sure I can see my episode of the flash, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> right. Um, I think we have some serious, uh, issues going on. So, yeah. Um, I mean, with everybody being stuck inside and stuff, like all of these movies and TV shows and things like that, they're really important to um, help people pass the time and stuff like that. But 
not at the expense of them getting made and, and other people's um, health when it comes to making them. Exactly. Um, so we got some news that they are recasting General Sam Lane for Lois and Clark. Um, so that's all we know. <laughs> Just worth yeah. mentioning because we've both talked about the return of Sam Lane and hopefully Lucy Lane. Um, if they bring well, now that we've had Crisis and it's one Earth, they could just be another Sam Lane and Lo- Lucy Lane from another Earth, and they've all just, I mean, just those lives, they all merge. Yeah, I mean, Crisis is the uh, <clears throat> wink, wink, we can change what we want and get away with it. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, that's that's pretty interesting. It's kind of a cool thing when you think about it the way that the timeline goes like so they it it comes from the beginning of time so um when the heroes wake up everybody has lived their lives up to that moment um whether the heroes you know whether the heroes remember their previous lives or their current lives but everybody has full memories full full time uh, existence has has lived on for billions of years by the time the heroes wake up I, you know i kind of wish that barry had kind of that thing going on like where we see a little bit of like his memories trying to realign because we had that episode where you know things weren't the same since crisis like the train his parents grave stuff like that um so we that's news. Um, there's not a whole lot of news. What else did I have? Oh, hold on. I had... Where did my news go? What the heck, phone? Oh, my gosh. Uh, so comics in the world are kind of on a stop because of Diamond. <laughs> not Not going to distribute comics. I mean, here in Ohio, all of our comic book stores are closed. Because they're yeah. non-essential businesses, um, but you know, Diamond's not—they're closing down production. I, I, okay, I know that Diamond's the distributor, but how exactly does Diamond work? Is what I want to know, because I get the sense that these comic book companies might figure something out and make Diamond obsolete. Yeah, it was—it was something about going through multiple. Um, multiple avenues or something when it comes to um, like distribution. And I don't know if that's, I don't know, um, distribution with comic, uh, with comic book stores or are they going to, because I remember years ago when I was a kid, you you could subscribe to comic books and they would be delivered. You still, you still delivered to your house. You still can. Can you do that? Okay. There's a thing on DC at the bottom where it says subscriptions, you know. Oh, okay. And well, I mean like yeah, to have the physical issues delivered to your home via mail or something like yeah, that. My friend used to do Green Lantern like that, and I haven't explored it. But I no. Just, I just feel like I know that so there's a comic book store here near us that does like old comics and collectibles and toys. And it's a really cool shop, but they don't do anything new. And he explained to me issues with diamond because you had to buy so many of certain issues or so much of this and carry so much stock or volume to even be able to get new books in. And I'm just thinking, man, if they can find a way to like get rid of diamond, some of these smaller indie shops like that might start carrying new books. Um, so I I don't know. I just it's something that we'll wait and see exactly what that's gonna mean. I mean you can still buy stuff digitally, but I prefer the physical ones. Yeah. I mean issues is kind of one thing, you know. Um having issues. I mean even it's, it's nice to it's nice to um hold issues in your hand as well, but um, you know, I, I still buy more trades than um, – or try to buy more trades anyways. Whenever I get some issues, I try and get a trade. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I, 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 I'm with you. Like, there are few books and stuff that I buy individual issues, but trades, they're pretty wonderful. Uh, it just makes, it makes reading series easier when you're like, oh, I want to go back. Because sometimes, like, it is difficult to go back and read stuff. Um, because... So you can't always find the issues that you want because they weren't collected like they were now. Uh, yeah. So, but let's see. Anything else going on? Oh, as of today of this recording, there was the live Q and A commentary with Zack Snyder, um, which was awesome. He posted the link, so I'm going to actually watch it later. And uh, I picked watch. up I so I had forgot what time it started. I didn't set a reminder or anything, but I saw that it was going. And when I started it, I picked up just at the training montage of Batman getting prepped for his fight. Oh, OK. So, yeah. So you missed some, too. But I watched it through the end, all the way until the friggin' cutout. <laughs> all the, uh, oh, the tease slash, uh, everyone, yeah. everyone thought there was a problem, but they did it on purpose. So. Uh, that's, yeah, they did it on purpose. Be, they, I don't know, man, like, <laughs> I want, I want the Snyder cut. I, I want it. And... Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever wanted a movie so bad in my life. I know, and I wanted Man of Steel so bad, and Batman vs Superman so bad, and Justice League until it actually until it, that actually happened. Um, <laughs> I wanted, I want the Snyder Cut so bad. Um, I don't, I don't know. You know, it's like the hype is. Is it real or is he just teasing? Like, I wouldn't think that he would be teasing as much as he does if if it wasn't coming down the pipe sometime. Yeah. Um, I mean, just as big as the movement is, you know, I mean, the movement is worldwide. There's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people, who – are supporting this movement, not just, you know, so not just the general public who would see it after it comes out, but just the hundreds of thousands, like I said, or millions of people, hundreds of millions of people who are following the movement. And, and then there are these companies, you know, I mean, Wendy's just joined. Yeah. Wendy's subway. There's another company there. All of these companies are joining in hashtag release the Snyder cut. I mean, this thing is pretty freaking massive. Um, it'd be, it'd be absurd if they weren't. Um, and from what I, I mean, from what they say, which is nothing official, you know, is that there have been talks of, of Snyder, like what would it take for from Warner Brothers to Snyder? What would it take him to be able to finish the movie? Um, so I just hope that's true. But man, like I don't think they would tease as much. They wouldn't keep doing like this the hyping up BVS. It's not just four years later. Like nobody does that. Just four years later, let's let's do this live commentary well, it's what's, like well what's interesting is if you watch like one thing i've always loved about every snyder film was the way he did his commentaries and when i bought bvs like i was mad because it was the first film of his uh that didn't have a director's commentary and i was like what the heck like i love to go back and watch the man of steel commentary watch uh the Watchmen commentary, but it's it's just it's nice to see, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do the commentary. I want to watch it with the commentary, but I might just listen to it. I've seen the movie enough 
that I don't have to like have it playing as I enjoy it. Right. That's what I started doing. I started here, you know, I started it and I heard him talking and stuff and I was just watching him doing his thing. And then, um, then I was finally done with what I was doing. So I hopped down and got on my prime and went to my extended cut. So I could just fast forward right to where he was and picked up right there. I, I literally started watching, um, I started watching right at the fight is when I started watching. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, I started right. I started watching right at the fight between Batman and Superman, uh, Batman and Superman. So, um, yeah. And, and I watched it from there on. So it's something fun. I, I kind of always thought that there wasn't a director's commentary for maybe a couple of reasons for the, um, for the, um, divis- divisiveness of the movie. Yeah. Um, for the, um, for the fact that he was, by the time the movie came out, he was pretty much going right into shooting justice league. Mm-hmm. Um, and would, and was pretty busy and, and as well as the way that Warner brothers n- freaking had their extreme knee jerk reactions every time a movie came out and wanted to change everything about the next movie. Um, so, you know, basically friggin', you know, buried him under a mountain of changes so he couldn't get it done. Yeah. So. So we are now going to discuss the, as of this recording, the last episode of Supergirl that we have for a while. So, and it is Alex in Wonderland. All right, James, you got a uh, summary for us today? Yeah, short and sweet. (laughs) Supergirl Season 5, Episode 16, Alex in Wonderland. Alex uses a pair of obsidian contact lenses to visit a virtual national city where she takes on a whole new persona as Supergirl. Kelly helps William investigate Lex, and Kara deals with difficult news. All right. So this episode, as we talked about last week, picks up where we learned that Jeremiah died and i had to take a step back and try to remember where like last time we saw jeremiah was in season two and i had to remember everything that happened with uh with jeremiah and i forgot like that you know i knew he was with cadmus and i forgot that he kind of was the cyborg that cadmus had control of and like he and that he ended up leaving more on a uh, a down note with Alex and them. So I was like, oh, okay. Because you know the way that Alex reacts about she's like the father that I loved and has been dead for years, so it's not a big deal. And I was trying to remember. I'm like, okay, what? what wait, what happened? So did you remember like the last time we saw Jeremiah? Um, the last thing I can recall of seeing Jeremiah was around the time when we saw the real Hank Henshaw and, um, he was trying to be cyborg Superman. Um, but he, he left because Cadmus was still kind of after him or, or trying to control him or something. That's about vaguely what I recall. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's the last time I recall him being around. I will say no matter what, he got the short end. This was very much, I felt like almost like an afterthought 
uh, kind of rushed, like, hey, let's just kill Jeremiah off. Um, because, like, in this episode, not to, to skip ahead or anything, but in this episode, there's a, there's a part where we see basically a, a, a body double uh, of Jeremiah. And it was just weird to me, like, like they couldn't have, for this episode that's supposed to be, like, emotional of saying goodbye to their father and this character, like, they couldn't even get the actor back, you know, knowing that he, it's not like he's, he passed, you know what I'm saying, to where they're trying to work around, like, a, a rough situation. So it's just one of those, I thought it was very much, a, like, a disservice to the character of Jeremiah. Um, I mean, I was, I was at least glad they, they gave him a, um, a good, um, what's the word? Uh, he was, they gave him a good story as what he was doing yeah. when it time, when he, when he died, mm -hmm. um, that he was back where, um, where he had first found Jean, um, I forget South America or something. Um, was it? Perfect? And I forget. Yeah, me too. They they said some. They said like. Uh, uh, they they said some kind of like region. I don't think it was Peru, but. I, I sounds like it started. I, I recall it maybe starting with a P, but Peru doesn't sound totally right. Peruvian? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, but he he was back in the same region that he found Jean in, and he was helping and protecting uh, a village or villager villages in the area. So he was doing good things before, or yeah, teaching people, but he was doing good things, um, for people when he, uh, when he died. So. I mean, I agree. It's just, it just kind of stinks. Cause even that when they do the quote unquote, like the last couple of minutes where they're, they kind of shoehorn a funeral in, they got Helen Slater back for a very tiny part, which makes me wonder if like she's supposed to like appear in the next episode or anything, but they don't even have like a picture of Jeremiah or anything at the funeral. Yeah, that was crappy. Um, and then, yeah, the body double, which was terrible. Like it didn't look any, didn't look anything like Dean Kane from any angle, even from behind. Um, but, um, she, uh, yeah, I I was actually surprised when Helen Slater popped up in this episode. Um, I almost thought they weren't getting anybody back. Um, and yeah, not having a, not having even a picture, like they could have easily had a picture of Dean Kane as Jeremiah, um, posted up for like memorial purposes for memorial's sake, but they didn't do that. <laughs> So it was, but so that's, I mean, the, the Jeremiah's like that is so small at the end. Um, Kara is, I mean, she's really absent. Uh, uh, what do you call it? The majority of this film, um, you know, this episode. And it was, it was just kind of shocking because like she doesn't even appear in the VR world. Um, but let's get into the meat of the episode, which is really Alex's journey. Um, you know, so basically, like you said, Alex decides she's going into VR. She puts on the lenses. Ooh, excuse me. She goes in. And she picks Supergirl, which is interesting. 
And when we saw last week, it kind of teased like we saw Supergirl as like a preloaded kind of identity to pick in VR. And I kind of would have got, I would have liked something maybe if they would have shown us why she chose the colors that she chose. Um, like why her suit was that color. You know, like what was the significance of the black and blue? I mean, I like the suit. I like that we, uh, she's wearing like a black wig to give it this different look when it starts. It's just, it's kind of interesting, you know? Yeah, I thought, um, I mean, the, the color scheme was really cool. Um, I kind of maybe just thought that, um, you know, black kind of for the fact of what she's dealing with. That makes sense. But that was already preloaded, remember, last week. Was that how it was? Yeah. No, uh, I'd, um, I'd have to go back and watch last week's. I only watched the episode once. Um, but, uh, I mean, when another girl shows up as Supergirl in, in virtual reality, she's wearing the original. Exactly. She's wearing the skirt and everything. Which was cool. A nice little callback, you know. Um, so Alex gets in there, and she's having a good time being Supergirl and Kara, and she's in virtual land, and she's loving it. And we start, she meets uh, Tilly, um, who's Tilly, what's she called? Oh, man, I had it written down. Was it Tilly the treasure hunter? Yeah. And she had a sister that was sick named Jill. And she talked about how she can't afford the ticket to go see her sister. Um, and then later, Alex runs into her again and starts talking to her. She has no memory of her sister. She doesn't answer to her real name. And it's kind of an interesting part because we, we start to see that there are people in VR who are losing themselves to VR. Yeah, the first person is that guitarist who's always there, and he doesn't realize he's in a virtual reality world. And then that's when we get the first reveal of of that um, that room we saw at the end of the last episode, um, where they're taking people who get lost or get stuck in the VR and that's where they're just staying. So that definitely has something to do with Leviathan's plan building, about I mean, trapping. They're building the huh? matrix. I mean, that's all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, they're trapping people in VR. They're giving them the sense that this is real. And then they're taking the bodies to a warehouse. Um, let's see. Her, her real name was Bonnie. And Tilly was her character. Mm -hmm. But Alex, you know, goes along with the DEO. She shows up at the DEO and the Henshaw is attacking. And it's, you know, regular, original <sighs> Hank Henshaw. And I thought that was interesting because, um, you know, that was the villain th that they chose. And she's Supergirl, so she shows up. They mentioned they've taken your sister, Kara. But we never see Kara. So, Just on a screen. Yeah, like a, like a publicity still type photo thing. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting, you know? Like, where, like, what was going on? Like, did Melissa just need time off, you know? Like, um, so now cut back, okay? And we find out that 500 users have been in, v in VR for over 48 hours. Because William is investigating and is talking to Kelly. Which was kind of an interesting kind of scene to, to see them two together. You know, like 
two side characters talking and communicating without having one of the main people that tie them together there, you know? Right. Because she's like, so I found that interesting. Um, and my favorite appearance in this episode was this, was by Mr. Abe Lincoln. <laughs> Honestly, uh, the, right. Well, there's some interesting things about this episode. I mean, yeah, there's some some different um, uh, people showing up um, who people want to be in VR and stuff. Um, <clears throat> the uh, okay, now I had some things on my mind and then I lost it. Blast, James. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> it's terrible. Um, yeah, the VR world, um, the, the fail safe issue, that's, that's what I was getting at. The fail safe issue that, um, came up last week, uh, Kelly is do being, uh, she's investigating that why, why she, she put it in and was, was told that it had been taken care of or submitted and everything, but it had never been taken care of. And yeah, she brings it to Andrea's uh, attention, and Andrea uh, gets after Alex after she finds out Alex is stuck in VR. Um, she goes and talks to a tech that some that this has to be taken care of right away, immediately. And the tech we see is Miss Tessmacher. Yes, we do. It's nice to see Eve Tessmacher. So, from pre-crisis to now, is she not hope? Is she not the embodiment of hope being uh, uh, working there? Or is she Miss Tessmacher again? Uh, see, that's a good one. See, that, okay, so with that thought, pause with that, because I was thinking about this. The multiverse was kind of reignited and started by the paragons so like part of the pieces would be things that they know or they play into um like so when they restarted things you would think that you know more things would be different like example miss tessmacher we back and not hope because it really feels like a lot of the stuff with like lena and the luthers nothing's changed you know like there's not been like there was things with andrea that changed, but there wasn't anything like it seems like with Lena. That well, changed. Lex was a well, Lex was a paragon, so Correct. he could he could make the Lex family however he however he wanted, however he remembered or wanted, as well as Miss um, Tessmacher. She worked for him, but she wasn't hope when he was around. He was dead or with the monitor at the time. Um, so the only memory that he would have of her would be as Miss Tessmacher. So bringing her, her being recreated from his memory, as it were, um, she would be te Miss Tessmacher because she was, she was only hope from, from Lena. Exactly. <laughs> so I hope she proves to be uh, back to being, Miss Tessmacher, because it'd be just nice to to have her. Yeah, um, she was good as it was um, for what they were, what they were doing. Um, having hope in there, the the computer, the the AI, and then putting her inside of Miss Tessmacher's body that was pretty interesting. It was kind of funny. Um, the robotic voice and everything. Uh, some other stuff they did. Some uh, some other people when they talked and about it, they made some nice little little jokes and talking like a computer. So there was some funny stuff that came from it. And <laughs> I mean, it was it was interesting how it how it happened. Um, and she took the fall, but then, yeah, when it comes to now, it's like, that never happened. 
Quite possibly. Yeah. Right. Um, so with that being said, we move forward with the fact that Alex is stuck and Alex thinks she gets out of ER. Okay. She thinks this isn't real, you know, something's wrong and we see her wake up, but then we hear something and she busts out. So she like woke up inside another level of ER. And we now see her in the Supergirl suit, but she doesn't have the wig on. So it's her regular Alex hair. And that's, yeah, it's... and it's playing into the fact of her thinking that this is real, that she wasn't in VR. Because um, Alex has the red eyes, and we're told that Psyche is attacking. And this is where... Kelly has to go in to get her, and uh, we see our shimp of Jeremiah, and then Alex is working with John and Brainy, and then Dreamer shows up, and they're trying to get here out, and eventually Alex realizes what's up and ejects herself with Kelly from VR. Um, and there was a good scene earlier where Kelly was trying to get her out of VR. And she even injects her with like her epinephrine adrenaline pin. And doesn't do anything. And then she calls our favorite CEO, Andrea. Rojas. <laughs> and she does nothing. Because, like Jania said, she's useless. Um, and I like this episode, but I don't love it as much as I feel like I should have. I think they could have done a lot more with Alex being stuck in VR. It could have been a lot more of a fun trip for Alex than how, right. they, and then how they did it, you know? Uh, um, I, I think they did. Um, I mean, the VR was pretty hardcore in trying to, um, make, uh, make her believe it was real. Um, the, the, the avatars of Jean and Brainy and Dreamer, like they were hardcore trying to get her like, like they had, um, they had malevolent intent as as computer programs um as avatar characters and they they made they made her believe she was in in the vr and then like they tried to pretty much lock up uh kelly before she ejected herself yep the first time so uh, that was pretty wild um, to see the characters, to see them play those characters like that, uh, like that, like being like malevolent like that. And uh, it's the, they had to, in the episode, you know, they were, it, it was about Alex's. It was about Alex dealing with what she was dealing with with the death of John, or John, um, Jeremiah. So like Alex had her, her issues that she was dealing with, and then they also furthered the plot of Leviathan and Obsidian and people getting trapped in the VR. So it's kind of. I think it was well done with everything that they used um, that they had to put in there. Could they have, if it was just an Alex stuck in VR episode at a different time, they probably could have been, they could have added a lot of, a lot more things to, to make it more interesting in that virtual reality, but definitely having to make sure that she was, 
that she she resolved her issues and then further further the uh the Leviathan obsidian plot was was necessary yeah i think i think it was well balanced in in that in that respect alex dealing with her stuff and then the overall leviathan plot i mean you're right um so i mean i just yeah i mean i i think it works effectively uh and the other thing is this episode that I actually really did like is William gets a tip and finds um the warehouse where all the bodies are, but old lady Leviathan is there and basically Gemma. No, it wasn't Gemma, it was the old one who I originally thought. Oh yeah, was. no, Gemma's the young blonde one. Yeah. You know, you're right. <laughs> Old Lady Leviathan, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think we got her name yet. And then, you know, so he's walking around, and if he just would have walked around, uh, you know, if 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 he would have walked around some more, he would have found, would have found him. He did, all she did was cloak him. Yeah, how convenient that, <laughs> how convenient that he just stops where, I don't know, seemingly the tracks end. Yeah. Like, so it, was she cloaking him, or is that room cloaked, as it were? I like, think I don't she know. Was because then he walks out and he finds a, a bracelet, like a medical bracelet, and I'm like, okay, at least he got something out of it, you know? Um, because, uh, and I, I like, I like that because you know I'm. Yeah, it'd have been a waste of time for him just to show up and leave and not get anything. Like I like William I as a character. I don't think I'm not on board with like a him and Kara thing, but I like him enough. I think he's a competent person and character. I'd like to see him actually accomplish something. Um so but yeah, so I mean that is our Alex and Wonderland episode. Um And, uh, yeah, I, I liked it. Um, and I am sad that this is where we have to end it for now, you know? Right. Yeah, that there's, there's just no more right now. It's, it's yeah, that's kind of, that kind of sucks, you know? And but yeah, I'm just sad. Yeah, I mean, we just we have to see, have to see how the world, how the world recovers here. Um, there's plenty of and, stuff to keep us busy. So yes, there is. <laughs> we'll still have episodes. We have a fun episode coming up that we're doing. Uh, and it'll it'll be interesting to hear. Uh, just a heads up for everyone, Brian, <laughs> ranting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that, that'll be a good time. And uh, until then, you know, um, we'll, we'll come back with some more discussions here and there, and we'll keep you entertained. So keep up with us. And, hey, also, give us a shout. Drop us an email. Talk with us. We'll read the emails online. It's Krypton Report Pod at gmail.com and start it up a discussion. Let's, let's make, let's have some fun. Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. Look in the sky.